at UCLA we have some funding to look at two different approaches for the derivation of embryonic stem cell lines from pre-implantation blastocysts. So these blastocysts come from the in vitro fertilization clinic. These are couples that have come into the clinic that have a problem with their fertility and this is one of the options that these couples have in terms of having a family. Uh, these embryos have undergone a process which begins at the level of the egg and the sperm. And so of course the egg is a female cell, the sperm is a male cell, and these are combined together in a dish to essentially produce a one cell early embryo. And this one cell embryo grows in a dish by dividing to form a ball of cells called the blastocyst. And all these stages of development from this these one cell embryo all the way to the small ball of cells in the blastocyst, which is about day five of embryo development, is quite called a pre-implantation embryo and it's a pre-implantation embryo because it has not implanted yet in the uterus. When these embryonic stem cells are derived from one blastocyst, those groups of cells are actually referred to as embryonic stem cell lines. And so therefore, one line comes from one blastocyst. But as a consequence of these IVF strategies, a number of surplus embryos are in fact generated. And these surplus embryos are then either going to be discarded or frozen down if the couple decides at a later date to have another child. And so for deriving embryonic stem cell lines, we're fortunate enough to have embryos that are consented to us that would ultimately be discarded. As a scientist, I'm very cognizant that these embryos are extremely precious. And so I feel very grateful that couples, once they've completed their family, are actually willing to donate these embryos to research. An approach that my lab takes because of our overall goal, which is understanding reproductive health, is to use embryonic stem cells to derive a cell type so we can actually study the biology of that cell type in a dish. What we do is differentiate this germ cell or this egg and a sperm from the pluripotent stem cell population and ask what is important for this cell type to form? What is it about this cell type that is required in order for it to be able to be used in fertility? Because infertility actually affects 30% of the population. So we believe that results from this kind of research will help us to understand the underlying causes of infertility. And I'm really excited when we can look into a dish of differentiating embryonic stem cells and say, aha, here is the cell type that we are the most interested in studying. Here is this early cell, this progenitor cell, which is ultimately going to go on to form an egg or a sperm. So recently in my lab what we've been doing is spending a lot of effort trying to understand how many cells will actually form this cell type and now we can actually take our fingers essentially and point to this cell and say here is the cell that we're interested in, now we can study this cell. So now we can understand how um, eggs and sperm form. Now we can understand why when eggs and sperm don't form correctly this can ultimately result in children that are born at birth defects. So by understanding the correct formation of this lineage, this opens up a, a huge area of research to understanding this one cell type. So that's the most exciting finding in my laboratory so far. And as a scientist, I'm extremely grateful that these couples are willing to donate their embryos to research and this research ultimately will result in, in a benefit to Californians and to society and this benefit is through both generating potentially a cell type that can help somebody that uh, whose cells are no longer operating correctly so in some sort of transplantation therapy or these embryonic stem cell lines essentially can help uh, help understand basic science, help understand the fundamentals of cell lineage differentiation because it's these fundamentals of science which ultimately lead to the new cures and therapies in the future.